We are here at this fantastic new venue now. I, I uh, heard Chris himself talk about this venue about three or four years ago. We were at a bike launch at that point. It was just a piece of paper, I think. Yeah, we're going to do this thing, and you said, that sounded um, huge. Now, you, you have uh, the opportunity to use this facility, so uh, how much has it, has it meant uh, in terms of, of the testing that you've been able to do? So this has allowed us to really add another dimension to the error testing services that we already offer to people. We do error testing uh, in outdoor locations, at outdoor velodromes, uh, we do indoor velodromes as well, and um, having done some wind tunnel work in the past, this is a very convenient and very well set out facility. So we're doing wind tunnel testing for clients to basically complete the triad of error testing um, and really allow us to get much more data and, and you know, a different kind of data in a different environment, more controlled environment than uh, doing it at indoor velodromes and, and outdoor velodromes. And who would you say that the error testing is uh, suitable for uh, and at which point maybe in your sort of life cycle would you perhaps consider uh, error testing in, in order to get the best value for it um, for, for your performance and I guess also your, your wallet? Yeah, so obviously error testing is um, it's quite it's like an expensive bike fit um, and when we do testing with riders it's important whether they're cyclists or triathletes it's really important to make sure that you're attacking the biomechanical aspects of, of things so you're not just focusing purely on the aerodynamics and for that reason you can it, it, aerodynamics is important for everybody as soon as you go over about 26 kilometers an hour aerodynamics is the thing slowing you down so you've got to make sure you you attack it and people do spend a lot of money on bikes and a lot of money on components and things um, but the body the human body is creating 75 maybe 80 percent of the entire drag uh, of the whole system so making sure you've optimized that part of the equation is a lot more cost effective than working on bikes and components um, so people might think that error testing is just for professionals or, or you know or professional teams national federations that kind of thing but really we get loads of different kinds of uh, athletes to us people who are just trying to beat their mates and club tts all the way to people who are trying to you know win ironman hawaii I guess there's lots of things that you can test. Yeah. Um, is there sort of an approach that you should do? Because when you're coming to this, in, ter in terms of all those things that you, you could test, having an idea of, of what you want to achieve rather than turning out completely blind with a million different options. Well, what we do, certainly what we do when you're doing an error testing session with us is we take all of that out of the equation. You don't have to know what you're going to be testing. That's our job, okay? So uh, before you come for a session with us, we go through um, your current setup, the sorts of goals you have, whether it's long distance triathlon, whether it's time trials, that sort of thing. And we, we then establish how we're going to run the session. Um, and we, we might know that, you know, for example, a, a particular clothing choice or helmet choice that you have could be optimized um, just from the previous knowledge we had of you know, nearly 700 riders um, going through our services. Um, so the rider doesn't have to come to an error testing session knowing a lot of things, you know, because aerodynamics is quite a tricky topic. Um, so certainly for us, it's, it's a case of we do all of the hard work and it's more a case of the rider just wanting to go faster. And obviously there are lots of options and you talked about there of, of bikes, of clothing, of components, of positions and lots of different things. If you are, from our perspective, you're a triathlete, you're doing middle or long distance race, so that's by far the biggest part of your race. So for a, even for a pro athlete, you know, we're talking over two hours for, on the bike for a middle, four and a half or so for an Ironman and much longer for an age grouper. What would you consider to be the sort of the, the top sort of the low hanging fruit, if you like, the things that even before you start, really, you, you need to be just ticking those boxes because that's just the, the easy, quick win, so to speak. One of the most important ones is making sure that you're used to your position. So being in the aero position is great, but if you can't maintain that position and you either lose power or you fidget or you have to sit up off the aero bars because it hurts your back or something, that's gonna cost you loads more than the fanciest wheels or the, or the best aero helmet out there. So making sure that you've done the training to be able to hold your aero position is absolutely crucial. That's free as well. I mean, that doesn't cost you anything. It's just, you know, make sure that you, you optimize that and uh, in terms of your, your training plan and prioritize it. Um, the other things that make a, make a big difference, things like clothing, um, you don't have to have really expensive clothing as long as it fits you correctly. So making sure you have fitted clothing that doesn't have you know, baggy bits on it like that create a sort of parachute effect and a sail off your back um, are really, really important. Um, number pinning, for a number belt, sorry, for triathletes is really important too, so get a good number belt that works for you. Um, these are all very simple things that don't have to cost you a lot of money but just are clever ways to make the whole system more aerodynamic. 
and you'll notice I'm focusing on the rider as well because the rider is such a big component of it. Um, other things you can do, helmets, aero helmets are quite, a, quite an important one. The tricky thing with aero helmets is that you really need to test it. You can't just say one aero helmet is good for every single rider. Um, we find that and we found that time and time again that even visually sometimes you say oh that one looks great but it may not test so well so having the opportunity to, to actually test a helmet is important uh, but you have comfort and visibility is issues with helmets too so even if you have the most aero helmet but you can't see out of it very well or it's too hot then there's no point using it um, very other cheap things you can do would be uh, optimizing the tires that's really really important making sure that you've got a good low rolling resistance tire and there's lots of data out there to help people choose the right kind of tires um, maybe move to tubeless, for example, just for ease of use and puncture protection, because um, there's some really good tubeless tires out on the market. Brand new GP5000, for example, has just come out, so that's, a, that's certainly a new option for people. Um, and, uh, and then after that, you can start looking at things like optimizing your, your bike, getting a, a, a better frame or, or better wheels, um, or, or a slightly better tri suit or skin suit. Um, certainly, working on the rider is really important. Um, and so spending the time and the effort making the rider as aero as possible is going to be worth a lot more than spending that money on a bike frame. Um, conversely though, making sure the bike frame fits you is really crucial because you can make your position worse by having a worse frame. So making, making sure the rider's in the right position is going to be a function of having the right size frame for you. Yeah.